Good evening, citizens of Chester's Mill. Hopefully you are not dome drones because we got a great show for you tonight. It's reaction cast time for Caged here on episode 59 of Under the Dome Radio. Welcome back to Under the Dome Radio. It's episode 59, and this is the unofficial podcast by and for fans of CBS TV's Under the Dome. Good evening to you. This is Wayne Henderson, and you, sir, are? I am, Sir Troy. You forgot your sir on your side there, Mr. Henderson. Yes, Sir Wayne, at Wayne Henderson on Twitter. I'm your voice acting podcasting Green Bay Packers fan, but we are here to talk about Under the Dome, and I was almost late because even with this water shortage i was trying really hard to keep that prius like shined and spotless under the dome in chester's mill oh and here i thought you were just trying to drink enough water because even aliens like yourself need to be hydrated (laughs) very true but i'm prepared liquefied Uh, liquefied so let's talk about the uh, wwe the bird cage (laughs) match this evening i they spent a lot of money on those cages. Uh, the cages look nice. And as usual, Big Jim Rennie stole the show, stole the entire episode. Yeah, I love the dialogue between him and Christine and between uh, Dean Norris and Marge's character this week. It was absolutely probably some of the best dome writing we've had since season one. The back and forth between the two of them, salesperson versus alien salesperson. <laughs> Do you hear the words that are coming out of my mouth? <laughs> I hear the words that are coming out of your mouth. And I, I'm i going to halfway agree. The uh, I didn't care for anything that Christine was saying, but I just focused on what Big Jim was saying, and I thought what he was doing was incredible. Oh, I love the lines. Like the, the only thing that's going to fall out here is your head in a jar. I thought that was one of the best lines of the night. And what's with the crazy mad scientist watching from above? Oh, uh, I mean... The things that Acteon is willing to do in order to get to the bottom of this, I'm still not clear on what Acteon's agenda is. Do they just want the power source, or do they truly want to find a way to get the alien DNA so that then they could potentially infect other people? No idea. Take a stab. Come on. It's reaction cast. What's your first reaction when you saw, ooh, we got this vial of alien DNA now. What's going to happen with it? My first reaction is they want to collect everything on everybody, humans, aliens, canines. They want to take it all, mix it all together, and come up with their evil plan to rule the world. That's a good enough answer for Under the Dome. (laughs) And they'd get away with it, too, if it wasn't for those meddling kids, the Scooby Gang. And that rotten dog of theirs, too. (laughs) Damn you, Indy. Damn you. (laughs) Oh, everyone knows it's Indy. Not Andy. Indy. Indy, yes. <laughs> uh, you could tell we were eating our happy pills tonight. Um, so I have a question for you. Were you happy with the explanation of how the dome came down? Christine touched the egg. All of a sudden, butterflies come out of nowhere. They get sucked underground into the giant suck hole. And then, boom, dome chomes up. And then, boom, mini dome chomes up. So are we saying that the egg did all of this? That's what they want you to believe. Uh, But the latest I heard is that we won't find out what the dome is and why it's there until the finale episode. Originally, we were promised we were going to find out in the season three premiere, but we didn't really. But now I've heard we're going to find out in the finale. So now you're saying we might have found out today? Well, we found out when the dome came and why the dome came. And I think the dome is there truly to protect the entity that is now Christine Price. And what we can, I guess, assume is that the crystals that were on the top of the cave at the end of the episode, it looked like it was kind of in a circle. Maybe it's like almost like the Dark Tower. I was thinking immediately, first of all, that it's like these are the beams. And if the beams fail between each of the crystals as it's making its crisscross that's powering the dome, the dome will fall just like the Dark Tower would fall. So that was my first reference for the evening. The second thing I thought of was, oh my gosh, they have a station map from Lost on the desk. This is great. (laughs) Except for this one looked like it was drawn up by a sixth grader. Well, and it looked like it was symbols too, like the hatches were on Lost. One one looked like a crown. One I thought looked like a spiral swirly thing. So I'm wondering if 
each of the symbols are like a faction, like a house crest of an alien race. And there's now multiple alien races that are coming to destroy humanity. So, Troy, Sir Troy, are you saying that possibly, because all along you've been talking about this third faction we might find, are you saying this could go the direction of falling skies and we could have many different factions and who knows which one of those is the most evil and wants to destroy everybody? I am saying that's exactly where it's going because we already know that this season is the prequel setup for the crossover Amblin Entertainment television event. This is the prequel to Falling Skies here in Chester's Mill. So if we see Ishvini and little tiny insects with human eyes, and the, uh, and the, and the Dor- Dorian, Dorian, I believe it was, the new race that was introduced in the final season. I can't keep track of all the alien names. But There's just so many when it comes to Amblin television properties. I, I can't remember who, who's on what show anymore. They, it's all one big, beautiful mess. But it's interesting that you pointed out that the dome could be there just to protect Christine. And, of course, all the other wacko people that are in Chester's Mill, some of them are believing the dome is there to protect them. But I'm with you that uh, the dome is not there to protect any earthling whatsoever. Yeah, which goes right into my original theory. Well, not my original theory. My original theory was a giant's contact lens. But my second theory was that the Chester Millions, the Millers, the Whistlers, as we can now call them, what, what is the tune they're whistling? That's what I want to know. I'm so frustrated by it. It sounds like X-Files. It sounds like Close Encounters of the Third Kind mashed up with a really bad director that couldn't figure out the key to start in. All I know is if I hear any more of this whistling or the term, the kinship, if I hear either of those anymore, I'm going to completely lose my mind what little is left. Yeah, it used to be that you like took a drink every time somebody said something weird on the show. Now every time (laughs) someone says kinship, we would have all been like worse than Sam by the time this episode was over. We would have been worse than the lady in the bathtub. May she rest in peace. Yeah. Let's not even talk about Abby because... Abby's a whole different concept, and we'll save our reactions about Sam and what Sam's all about for the rea- uh, full episode later this week. So the, the real question there becomes, people are willing to take themselves out of the picture if it means doing what's good for the goop. I mean, the group. <laughs> Hunter wants to die. I, I'm okay with that. Let the guy go. <laughs> I'm okay with that as well. It could just be that the actor that plays Hunter saw the scripts for the upcoming episodes and thought, this is not going to be good for my character. Just write me out. Hey, you know what? If I had the option between getting out of the dome and getting hit by a giant meteor or just getting stuck with a needle, I'd I'd take giant meteor any day. At least it'll be quick and painless. Exactly. Because one of these is going to make you unconscious. And the other one that looks just like the other one is what's going to stop your heart. So don't get them confused and take them in the wrong order. The only thing that I was confused about was the pill. There was a pill switcheroo, wasn't there? Didn't Sam have the pill bottle and then Sam made it look like the pill bottle was actually Hunter's? Or did I miss something in that sequence? I may have blinked or accidentally skipped ahead far too many times when I was trying to skip commercials and I didn't see any pill switching. Well, we've known to been we have been known to be wrong before. Just look at you know last time when we talked about Andy the dog instead of Indy the dog. So uh, yes. if if you understand the pill scenario at Hunter's bedside with Sam, then give us a call at plus one nine zero four four six nine seven four six nine. Go to underthedomeradio.com slash feedback. Let us know what we missed so that we can make sure we pick up on it when we do the rewatch tomorrow before the full fan reaction podcast. You guys have been great, by the way. Uh, just getting in your voicemails uh, super, super quick by 8 p.m. Eastern on Fridays. Uh, we, we can't thank you guys enough. And they've been awesome this year. So just keep them coming because we're not even halfway done yet with Under the Dome this summer. Yeah, the voicemails from listeners, that's been the shining high point. And because the creativity of the Under the Dome radio listening community is fantastic. And we do realize it can be a bit of a burden to expect you to turn around, compose your thoughts, and send them in within 24 hours. But that's just what happens when you have a Thursday night show and when we record the full uh, episode. But with that being said, it's going to be really interesting next week. We'll have more details later. But next week, for one week only, you get a little extra time on your feedback. But we do want to hear your thoughts on this episode because, like you said, we've been wrong before. Heck, I was wrong about five minutes ago. (laughs) 
I think I was wrong when I was tweeting out stuff tonight. I was like, whoa, what just happened? I just missed that. Did, did Junior hit Julia in the back of the head? At least be a man. What, hit her in the face or something. <laughs> like, just come uh, up behind her and cold cock her. That was rude. That was bad stuff. And they are kind of confusing folks because they've talked a lot about the oxytocin. And then we had that pill bottle of oxycodone. And I could see where somebody might get them confused. The names are just a little too similar. Yeah, and I was just waiting because of all the other lost references that have been on the show over the years for oxycodone to actually show up in the show. And boom, we got it tonight, which was great. I think that might have been oxycotton that Jack was taking. But then again, we don't want to be wrong about something. So Cotton, we'll cotton, coden, you know, potato, potato, pod potato, uh, pod potato, you know. Oh, potato <laughs> And I must so, say, Uncle Sam, as well as being a patriotic dude, had that miraculous recovery from his alcoholism. He's part of that new one-step program. Yeah, the one step is kill the person that killed my girlfriend. <laughs> I, I'm going to have to say, even though Big Jim stole almost every scene, my favorite part of the whole episode was finally somebody's at least trying to take out Christine. Yeah, and the question becomes, is he only doing that based on a revenge motive because of Abby? Or has he actually broken away from the kinship? Or will he actually join the kinship still, even though the leader has been re-cocooned at the end of this episode? I have a motion that we make the phrase the kinship along the same lines as the fight club, and we're not allowed to talk, talk about, about the kinship anymore. <laughs> I'm not sure. Or... Maybe Sam was actually being controlled, and although it looked like a minor victory for the good guys, it's all part of the evil plan to make Christine more powerful than ever before. Could be, could be. I, you know, and it, we would be remiss. It's been very kind of put in our face that the people are here to make babies, and I thought it was really interesting that uh, <sighs> Miss Ava was like, well, you know, if, if you could just get on with the kinship, sorry, I had to mention it again. Oh, no. But if you could just get along with the group, you know, we could both have Barbie together. And I was like, whoa, oh. that, that's what it takes to get that to happen? That's interesting. This was terrible. I mean, let's just lay it out there. I, when that came up, you know, CBS and Amblin, they're going way over the line yet again this time with this thinly veiled reference. And truth be told, when they brought up that crap yet again this week, I'm embarrassed to be associated uh, with the show when they're going this direction and just being totally ridiculous out of line. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing to say that we have to do invasion of the body snatchers and procreate the alien race or whatever, but do it in a more couth manner. Uh, the, yeah. the three-way comment, I was like, Whoa, that's a little out of left field, even for network television. Yeah. Even for a show that's grasping for ratings and trying everything to try to draw in somebody that was ridiculous. But, Near the end, we did get some good stuff when uh, when Christine tells Junior, to the bat caves. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I didn't think, see the bats, but still, same thing, only different. I thought it was even better right before that when he's in the finished dormitory and everybody's moved in in their bunk beds. And I'm looking at those bunk beds and I'm like, this is what the orcs slept in in the Hobbit movies. It was like, <laughs> it almost looked like it was five beds high or something because they didn't have a ceiling anymore to impede them from going True. as tall as they wanted to. Um, amazing. Amazing. I mean, how many people can fit in that one building before the floor gives out? That's what I want to know. You just build the bunk beds 10 high and somebody's going to have to climb up a really high ladder to get into the top bunk. But, you know, it's TV. So we did notice, of course, at the end of the episode, the crystals are on the ceiling, the amethysts, and they are going out. And it seemed like because she had to re-cocoon herself, that drew a little bit more power than she probably wanted. So... Maybe three more amethysts are going to disappear, which brings up the question of will the dome have a weak spot as we move forward into these next coming episodes with the, the big dramatic things that are going to happen that we can't talk about because they would technically be a spoiler, but we'll talk about them, of course, uh, later on in our full reaction podcast later this weekend. The dome may have a weakness besides the mysterious tunnel in the middle of the methane-filled lake, but besides that, a, a weakness... Say well, it isn't so, Sir Troy. Well, that's the big question, right? What happens when the crystals go out? If the crystals go out, is the dome gone? She said it's going to calcify, and then they won't be able to breathe. But does that mean that you could tap on it and it'll crack? I don't know. So I think that's something that we'll have to keep an eye on as these crystals keep disappearing because nobody installed the clapper after we told them to last week. 
and that was great advice. Somebody needs to listen to you, Sir Troy. My vote is drain the lake and find that portal and everybody go to Zenith. But that portal in the lake is only one way in. How is that possible? We got to find the portal that goes back out, which was all. How can a portal be one way? That's what I want to know. Why do streets be one way downtown? It's to get traffic through faster. Why did Radio Shack used to ask for your phone number when you bought AA batteries? I, I don't know. I don't know. But we digress. Uh, yes, we do. We'll be talking a lot about this episode, of course, when we get together with our full discussion this weekend. Again, we want to get your feedback. You can still answer our dome-provoking question from last week, which was what's going to happen to the Millers now that their leader is gone. And that still kind of holds because she's gone now because she's re-cocooned. So do you think that they can survive on their own? Do you think that they're going to start jumping out of the windows like lemmings? Time will tell. So get, make sure you get in your answers to that question. Again, 904-469-7469. Or give us a buzz at underthedomeradio.com slash feedback. You can send in an MP3 of your voice for your voicemail. Use the speak pipe widget, the record button on the website. Or, of course, you can just go ahead and send us a good old-fashioned email. And we'll be able to get that over the teletype machine. We'll take any and all feedback. You could even go crazy and attach a WAV file, an AAC, an Og Vorbis, whatever you want. Go super geeky. We want to hear from you and include your feedback on the full discussion episode of Under the Dome Radio. And until then, I am at Wayne Henderson. And I am at Troy Heinrichs. That's Heinz Ketchup, Ritz Crackers, Nosy in the Middle. You can follow us there on Twitter or, of course, UTD Radio Podcast during the episode as we live tweet every night before the reaction cast. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you on the full show as we stay trapped under the dome. Under the dome radio. Under the dome radio is a proud member of Noodle Mix Network. Get more of our award winning and award nominated podcasts to make you think, laugh, and succeed at noodle.mx. Get organized in your personal and professional life, laugh with our clean comedy, theorize over great television shows, and so much more, all waiting for you at noodle.mx.